Aww. Superheroes speaking in haikus? I mean, uh, not really my speed. No? I'm over what do you want to talk about instead? couple of minutes. We're kind of waiting for the rest of the panel to turn up. It's also okay, not one of them. Eternity, where, where the ancients will be 
dispensing wisdom to you? Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll let the I'm sorry, I'm going to <laughs> Yeah. You've lost your hair, I mean. Ancient, so I'm, I'll cop to that. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, quickly go down, make sure everybody knows the players involved. Start with my far left. Uh, I'm Jerry Ordway. I did uh, Power Shazam in the 90s. I'm Jeff Parker. Most recently, I did the two Shazam uh, stories in the Convergence uh, event with the classic Marvel family. Uh, Danny O'Neill, I've, I've been working in funny books for 50 years. <laughs> uh, Kevin McGuire and I drew Captain Marvel for six issues. <laughs> Shazam. Obviously, you know, he's, he's back in the public eye thanks to the movie coming out next spring. But let's talk about what is the appeal to the character in those comics. And I want to start with Denny because you actually bought them off the newsstand back in the 40s. So what, you know, what was the... Yeah, I did. I uh, didn't, didn't like them as much as Superman. Okay. But I didn't recognize that they were basically the same character. <laughs> uh, Hence the lawsuit. <laughs> what's interesting about that is it, it's the only major superhero that I know that was created by a committee. Uh, Fox's Publishing, which had been doing various kinds of magazines, decided to get into the comic book business. So they went to the guy who edited their movie magazines, because movies are pictures, and comics are pictures. This is what we call a carpet thing. Yeah, Bill Parker is this guy's name. Yeah, and uh, they, they created that weird kind of conglomeration of different mythologies and religions. And they didn't take it seriously. You had a talking tiger. I mean, you, <laughs> Dr. Savannah, yes. the evil genius, looked like, you know, your, your, uh, Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he looked like you. <laughs> uh, so, do you see him, uh, a lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit? Finally, my understanding, Bobby probably knows more about this, is that Fawcett decided to stop publishing comics. Yeah. And so DC acquired it, and I made a basic mistake that an editor should never make. And what is that mistake, Danny? <laughs> Why, it's funny you should ask. Uh, <laughs> you never try and recreate something that you loved as a kid exactly as what it was when you loved it as a kid. It's the Julie Schwartz maneuver. You figure out what made the character popular in the first place and you leave that intact and then everything else gets changed to reflect what's outside the window. Uh, Julie did that with virtually the entire DC superhero line with the exception of what Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. All right, since you bring it up and then I want everyone else to chime in about uh, the attraction of the character, but when you were handed Shazam number one and said, here, write Captain Marvel. C.C. Beck was back involved. C.C. was the artist um, who uh, first drew Captain Marvel. Not the president of my fan club. Uh, <laughs> right. But how much of, of, of trying to recreate the Golden Age feel was you and Julie versus how much did C.C. want to put into this? I don't know that Beck uh, really knew what he wanted. It was going to be wrong. The mistake I made is trying to recreate what I loved as a kid. The trick is uh, television understands this pretty well. Grant Gustin is a pretty good Flash because he is a very contemporary kid. You would not want to cast him as a cowboy because he does look so present tense. That's what I thought my job was recreate the Captain Marvel that I remember. My job should have been to rethink that character 
and try and figure out what made him popular and then do that in a present tense. Okay. Put a button on that for the moment. Gentlemen, Jeff, what, what's the appeal to the captain to you? Oh, well, uh, a lot of those early stories were written by just one of my favorite writers, Otto Bender. And he fleshed out this world that was like no other character. I mean, like they said, Mr. Tawny. But to have your most diabolical head villain, even greater than Dr. Savannah, be a Martian worm with a radio yeah. around his neck. And they just stretched that, that for 26 issues. That's, yeah, that's, I know, they stretched it out and then it's a surprise and it's like, I'm sorry, that to me is comics. I love that sort of thing. I back, uh, you know, just all those characters. I, and that's, it was his whole world. That's what I liked. It, it, was, it had its own logic to it. And of course, when DC put Fawcett out of business, they took Otto Bender, who then created everything I liked in Superman, you know, the Phantom Zone, the, the Bottle City of Candor, all that stuff. The Legion. Yeah, the, yeah, everything comes from him. So, okay. good move if you got lawyers. <laughs> Jerry, and they were all making it up as they went along. There oh, yeah. were no comic books that served as models. Right. It's those guys, for very little money, created an art form against deadlines. Also, Cat Marvel had the best covers. Nobody else's covers could hang with, with those. <laughs> uh, they were gorgeous to go look at. And well, the way it, it, it's always raining and cloudy in Gotham on television, where Captain Marvel operated, it was always a sunny, beautiful summer day. Yeah, it's like it was the, very cheerful. It's, it's like the Skeezix autumn. And yet it started out dark. I mean, that, the appeal to me, I, I, I will go with what Denny said about when you're a, a really big fan of something, sometimes you're not the best judge of trying, or the best person to do it because you really like it in almost a specific time frame, like, oh, when I was eight years old or whatever. With Shazam, I like the costume. I was aware of the character mostly through reading Storenko's History of Comics, and I saw some of the, the visuals and I thought they were interesting, but I mostly had a connection by virtue of reading C.C. Beck's various um, little opinion pieces, which it, in this day and age would be, yeah. be like a blogger. He'd be the crusty blogger or something now. But crusty um, was the title. That's when he right. when he did these things, they were all very negative. It was you know comics had to be uh, humorous. I mean he was against the tide of anything being more realistic, and he was very bitter. But I respected that because he created this character. So when I got the opportunity to do it, I was. I won't say I'm happy he was, I'm not happy he was dead, but I'm glad that when I did it, he wasn't around because I would have felt, I would have felt more pressure about it. Even though I know the fandom for Shazam, there was a big fandom in, in the, you, they did newsletters and all this stuff. So they were there and I wanted to be respectful of it. I was able to come to, it, come to the character from a slightly different angle and my editor, Jonathan Peterson, he said, well, we could do something that is more evocative of the Republic serial, ah. and then work our way back towards the actual Marvel family stuff. So that was our starting point. And the, if anybody who still looks at the origin of, of Captain Marvel, it's a very dark opening. Oh, yeah. Billy is living on the streets, Shazam. I mean, the city is dark, and it's raining, and, and all this. And he follows a stranger into the subway. I mean, these were all You're things allowed to that, do that back then, to follow strangers in the sun. <laughs> you, you were living on the streets, obviously. No, but I mean, these were all things that I wanted to address. You made that make sense. And I was super <laughs> impressed. And it was an important thing to me. That was one of the, the things I was proud of, is like, I kept saying that bugged me so much. And then within my story, I made it <clears throat> that it was his, his dead father's, you know, ghost or spirit that leads him to Shazam. And that's why he would fight. It wasn't a stranger. It was his father. So Jerry did exactly what I was talking yeah. about. He rethought what he what made the character unique. And what the funny other thing I want to mention, and I, I've told Denny this back when I was doing it, is that I read those issues that Denny had written, and uh, they were really clever. I, I actually enjoyed them. Uh, he created this suspendium thing and had the Fawcett City trapped in in time, in a sense. It was like a bunch of really interesting bits that I incorporated. The other right. stuff that I incorporated was uh, what Kevin had done uh, on Justice League, where they had Captain Marvel in there interacting with various DC characters. I didn't want to, like, I came into it to 
basically relaunch it, but I didn't want to have fans necessarily be mad that, oh, that's a different guy or whatever. I, I like the idea of that continuing the big picture continuity. So I tried to incorporate elements of all this stuff without, you know, if stuff I didn't like, I didn't say, oh, that didn't exist. I just ignored it or didn't bring it up. Okay, Kevin. We haven't heard from you yet. Is the, what it, was there an appeal to Captain Marvel to you before you drew him? Well, I'm still thinking about Graham Gustin as a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he can do it. Kind of like Tom Mix, though. Yeah. Tom Mix did one of the yeah. cowboy, like singing, a singing guy. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> the appeal of Captain Marvel prior to you drawing him. Prior to my drawing well, Was there an appeal as a reader, fan? Uh, no, I have no idea what here. Um, I mean, yeah, he was, he was, I, I, I hadn't, I didn't, I, I'm not as schooled as you guys about the history of uh, okay. Shazam. Uh, I, they just said, we well, drew him in, in Justice League, you want to be in the panel? I was like, okay. Now, so ask me about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's touch on that because the Please way, touch. the way you handled the character, I know, you know, it was Keith and, and, and uh, Mark Mattis mm -hmm. who, yeah. And Helper, picked, Andy Helper was a, a strong influence. Um, I'm in the direction of that series. Okay, but the direction, the way Captain Marvel fit into the Justice League is very close tonality to what we're uh, being promised in the feature film, if you look yes. at, the, at the trailer. Yeah. So why don't you talk about that? Now, what was your drawing this big, goofy kid? Uh, well, we, Andy Helfer and I always used to have debates about how wise or naive he was, because I, my argument is, well, what does that stand for? It's what, the wisdom of Solomon, what does that mean? If he's got the wisdom of Solomon, would he be like as naive as they were kind of playing him? Mm -hmm. So we constantly have debates about that. And that's really kind of the most interesting thing I have to say about <laughs> Shazam in my, during my time, except I wanted the tunic rather than the, the Oh, you wanted to go with the original yeah. tunic? Yeah, that was my, uh, that would have been my preference. A bit for sure. Oh, yeah? All right. Okay. Yeah. It, was a it was a military jacket, though, and it gave you...